Hello everyone and welcome to another Armenia Media exclusive interview. Today we are joined by Shahin Arabognian. You might recognize him from our news update segment called Week to Week. He's our Armenia correspondent directly from the ground. Shahin, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Meg? I'm doing amazing. Thank you. It's, it's really lovely to be in Hayastan after so many years and after Corona and everything. So it's really great to be back and it's great to finally meet you Likewise. face to face. Totally, totally. <laughs> so just for some context for our audience, Shahin and Armenia Media, we've been working together since January. Yeah. And this is the first time that any of us have been able to meet Shahin in person. So and it's like mid-August. Yeah, <laughs> so like seven, eight months in. Um, so it's so great that we get to be together. So Shahin, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a bit about your life in Hayastan and what brought you here. Okay, uh, so hi, <laughs> my name is Shahin and I'm born in Beirut, Lebanon. And I moved here uh, end of July last year. It was supposed to be a three-week vacation, but I ended up canceling my flight return uh, return flight ticket, and I stayed here. Uh, and it's been one of the best decisions I've taken in my life. And I'm not saying that just to say that. I really mean it. Um, it's been great so far. I've made a lot of friends. I have uh, I have a lot of friends from around the world, repats, uh, foreigners, etc. Uh, I found my you know own circles here. I found a um, an office I enjoy working in, etc. But yeah, that's basically it. That's basically it. That's awesome. I'm really glad to hear. And tell us a bit about what your daily life looks like here. What what's your job? Okay. Um, are you enjoying your your profession? Yeah. So I'm currently wrapping up my master's degree in multimedia journalism, um, working on my thesis and my research, which by the way is based on Artsakh. Um, and what I do here is I work for an American company called One Planet Studios. I'm their editorial manager. Uh, I manage a team of writers and, you know, correct, correct their work and edit their stuff. Um, and I also, especially in the summertime, there's everyone who visits Armenia. So there's never a dull day. You always end up having to meet with someone, even if it's a weekday. Like today. But, like basically <laughs> today. Um, but yeah, um, everything's great. And that's basically it. That's awesome. Um, so it's been, like we said, seven or eight months that you've been working with us. Tell us a little bit about how you're finding writing week to week. Um, what's your process like? Because this last year or so, I mean, always, but especially this year or so, we've had quite heavy news stories, but you managed to write them in such a lighthearted and digestible way. And you also find really cool people to interview and fun things to include into the recap so what's that process like for you and how are you finding the experience um honestly the the fact that uh i do try to make it as digestible as possible is because i try to digest it first yep. uh because there's so many you know news blurbs everywhere there's so much happening and you tend to not be able to keep track so throughout the week i bookmark the things that i know i have mm -hmm. to include um and it also is really influenced by the people around me, the people who are affected, both locals and diasporans and even Artsakhtis. Um, so it's been very interesting to be able to cover this from Yerevan. Uh, it's not like, you know, I'm, I'm going down to the streets and like, you know, shooting live footage or anything, but it makes a world of a difference yeah. to be here vis-a-vis uh, -vis being, you know, covering it from, you know, anywhere else in the world because the, the digestible part is because I'm, I'm in Armenia, yeah. because I can tell what people feel, I can ask them, I can ask what the most important part mm. for them is, and then, you know, write those down. Yeah. And that's basically it. And that really comes through um, when when I read it and when the, feed that, the feedback that we get, um, people really enjoy reading it, and it's just such an easy read, and it's such a good mix of serious topics, lighthearted topics, educational, a special shout out my favorite part is the multimedia corner <laughs> how do you find those things to include okay so um sometimes there's like a huge wave of content yeah. that i find it's not that i actively look for them yeah i just save the things that i think are interesting and i keep them for future mm -hmm. week to weeks so i don't actively search for things it's just things that pop up on my social media feeds and even if it's like for example for videos I have a backlog of like yeah. 10, yeah. but for things to read, it's not always that you find yeah. interesting things to read. So I search for the things that we have to read and like learn about. But usually music and videos, they're really easy to find. Uh, reading and learning uh, parts are 
things I have to look for sometimes. Yeah, that's my favorite part of week to week. <laughs> and if any of you haven't read them yet, that's that section alone. Even if you're not interested in news, it's so much fun, and there's always something cool to see and to learn there. Um, we've had such a positive response to your column for us. Uh, it's just the perfect recap of everything, especially social media is really overwhelming sometimes. It's really nice to just have everything in one place. Have you had any, I guess, feedback face to face here in Yerevan? I know some Australians live um, here. I've had face to face feedback, and uh, I've had face to face feedback and um, virtual feedback of people I know who live in Australia, because obviously this is their go-to media yeah. outlet, right? So oftentimes the algorithm basically showed them my name or my face somewhere mm -hmm. somehow. And it was a really, you know, I've never been to Australia. <laughs> uh, I have no, you know, direct correlation or like relations with Australia. So it was a little bit surprising for me. I had friends, uh, Aussie Armenian friends text me being like, I just saw your face on my Instagram <laughs> feed. It's sponsored, <laughs> like not not just you know, uh, uh, regular feed. Yeah, yeah, like I saw your face and it was sponsored, <laughs> and it was a media outlet I follow, and I yeah. know the people who run it. So yeah. like it was a little weird for them, but it was all positive for sure. Um, I have asked every single person who mentioned that to me to give me constructive criticism and not just positive stuff. But so far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I'm. I, for one, am enjoying it. I know everyone I've spoken to enjoys it a lot and I'm looking forward to continue to work together. Um, so just apart from week to week, you're a very busy guy. Um, you're, every time I go on Twitter and see what you're doing, there's always cool stuff happening there. Um, one theme that I notice a lot in your work is your passion or um, interest in Western Armenian language and finding new ways for young people but also everyone to continue to incorporate that into their daily lives. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit about some of the projects you've been working on recently that involve Western Armenian, um, anything coming up and why that's so important to you. Right, uh, so one of the main projects that I work on is Western Armenian Wikipedia. Um, the work started in 2015 but it materialized in 2018, mm -hmm. 2019, and now we've established our own, own body. We're represented at international conferences. There's the Wikimedia Summit coming up in less than a month. The Western Armenian language is represented wow. there for the first time. So this opens a lot of doors for not just Armenians to, to you know, do something about Western Armenian, but also the Wikimedia Foundation, mm -hmm. which is like one of the biggest foundations in mm -hmm. the world, for them to like fund Western Armenian projects, initiatives etc and the things that they fund is usually things that interests the uh, people our age yep. uh, so that's really important for me I'm also uh, my friend and I Suren uh, Papazian we founded Padik which is the Western Armenian Wordle we founded Monkey Type which is basically a platform that helps you uh, you know uh, practice your typing skills and how fast and accurate you are when you're typing and I'm currently working on a book in Western oh, Armenian. Wow. And it's specifically about what we were discussing, about the integration process. Mm -hmm. It's a collection of poems, short stories, and translations of poems and short stories. And that's the extent of my Western Armenian you know, projects for the time being, I think. That's <laughs> quite prolific already. <laughs> you say that like, oh, that's the extent of but it. But like, it's like parts. <laughs> it's not like I constantly yeah, work on these things, of right? But it's still, the impact of it is already like so obvious. I, I personally am a huge, huge fan of Padik. You know, Padik right now, when we started and the, the hype was really high, it, it, we used to have like 800 to 900 daily players. Yep. Right now it's 1800 daily players. Wow. And consistently. Yes. People are addicted. <laughs> Seriously, so I introduced this to my family and they love it so much. So many of my family players uh, family members, sorry, play it every single day. Yeah, so I've, they're definitely part of that 1800. It's such a cool... Um, yeah, I had someone come up to me and say his sister and his mom fought because of that. <laughs> because, like, she shared the word or something. I don't know. My mom, <laughs> my mom's done that to me before. Spoiled the word. Yep. Yeah. Not but, nice. <laughs> not at all. But another awesome recommendation for our viewers if anyone hasn't played yet. Um, so on the same topic of Western Armenian, and I, and I suppose Armenian in general, what recommendations do you have for people in the diaspora to find ways to incorporate Armenian into their everyday life, aside okay. from just the conversational, casual chat? Okay. Because that happens all the time. 
but it's quite limiting in vocabulary. Okay. Um, I would say uh, for me, honestly, or the people in my circle who were, um, you know, motivated or incentivized mm -hmm. to start using Western Armenian more, especially the diaspora folks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's usually finding contemporary books and novels that are easy to digest and easy to read. I would suggest Medaghe Eraznir by mm -hmm. Christian Padigian. If you like young adult, uh, if you like coming of age uh, books and novels and movies, it's perfect. It's basically an Armenian version of The Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, nice. It's really good. It's written by a 30-year-old guy who lives in France, so it's written by a young guy as well. Uh, and stuff like that. I, w I will continue including Western Armenian resources in week to week as I have done before and you guys should follow it up and, and make sure to use it because it's not just a language that we know for, for the sake of knowing, it's a language we have to know. Exactly, for sure. Um, Shine, it's been a pleasure. Likewise. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. Thank you so much um, for interviewing me. Oh, anytime, anytime. <laughs> it was honestly really nice to finally see you in person after working with each other for so long. Um, so if you want to keep up with Shahin and his week to week updates, please follow our media media on all of our social media channels. Um, Shahin, do you have any upcoming projects you would like to share or where can the audience follow you? Um, not really, <laughs> <laughs> not really, but, um, if I do, I will make sure to mention them in work week to week. Yep. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you so much again. Thank and you. And thank you all for tuning in to our interview. Bye. <laughs>